what was the whole aim behind this idea of writing this book? You know, my father used to uh, write diaries and uh, he has left them uh, with me. My father also wanted to uh, write a write me, you know, he has told many journalists that, uh, uh, you know, what about the diaries and all. He said, you know, I have left them with my daughter, it's, uh, he's, she's going to write about it. But of course, you know, he said the diaries can't be published. Uh, so this is not publication of his diaries because that needs a different thing. And also there are many information in the diaries, what I felt and which he also rightly thought. It should not come out in the public domain, of course, not of as yet. So I have, you know, left out uh, the real contro, you know, what he thought about uh, Sonia Gandhi or what he th thought about Dr. Manmohan Singh or what he thought about uh, the current Prime Minister. I mean, those are not, uh, media makes it to be controversial, but those are not really controversial issues or, uh, you know, but being, you know, in key positions uh, for so many years in the government. Uh, so he was privy to many things. Uh, which perhaps are not suitable as yet to come out in the public domain. And he was very clear that he is also not going to talk about it. And he also made me uh, promise that obviously I am not going to talk about it until and unless, you know, the government of India decides to declassify those files. How he was uh, nearly giving up hopes of becoming president and then finally, uh, as circumstances, it was forced upon him, the party to... Uh, you know, uh, put him as the president of India, you bring that out very beautifully in the book. Well, I think, you know, he believed always that it was perhaps, uh, you know, Mamta's uh, 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 announcement. Uh, announcement. I mean, he's firstly his opposition and the way the, she announced, you know, without consultant, consulting uh, Sonia Gandhi, who was the UPA chairperson. And uh, so that finally, you know, sealed See. the deal mm -hmm. in his favor. And he, later on, he would often joke that, thank God, Mamta opposed me, <laughs> otherwise maybe I would not have been the president. <laughs> so. and, and, and I come back to another point, because when you say a daughter remembers, it must have been very hard. And you bring that out beautifully in the book, saying that the decision of you to tweet against his visit to uh, the RSS headquarters in Nagpur uh, was of your own, not because Ajay Makran yeah, or anybody yeah. else did. Uh, that that is uh, something that you must explain to uh, people who would definitely want to buy this book. Uh, hopefully, yes. When my father visited RSS, so I was fully involved in uh, uh, Congress politics. So naturally, I was swayed by the views of the party, and I decided to tweet against him. And uh, it was because you know just before that, you know there was a rumor was being spread in the media that I'm going to join BJP. So I was already angry with my father. And I had fought with him, and on top of it, this, you know, uh, this uh, thing came. So I tweeted, and I have to say that nobody from my party told me this. Rather, you know, just before that, when the uh, the rumor started floating that I'm joining BJP, Ajay Makanji, who was the TPCC president then, and he, uh, my boss, so he called me, and I clarified, and he told me not to tweet. He said, "Don't interact with the media. I will tweet your denial." But I was very, very angry, and I tweeted. Um, you know, of course, you know, looking back, as I also wrote in the book, looking back, I think it was very foolish on my part to do that. I shouldn't have. I should have respected my father's decision because he always believed in dialogue. And But nobody from Congress. But he didn't get upset did. with your tweet? Not today. at all. Not at all. <laughs> not, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. You know, with father, daughter, I mean, I, I would like fight with my father. So, and, and uh, not at all. Rather, I mean, he felt that, you know, it took a lot of courage for me to, to do, do that. Also, the relationship with the, the new Prime Minister, who's now uh, in, at the helm of affairs, uh, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, he, he talks about his entire, you talk about that entire yeah. equation with him and how uh, there is a great amount of reverence uh, from him towards uh, uh, Mr. Pranam Mukherjee. Uh, well, I think, you know, this is something very strange, uh, considering their uh, different uh, uh, ideological, uh, ideological uh, difference. But I think the relationship goes back uh, many years before even uh, Mr. Modi became the Gujarat Chief Minister. And Mr. Modi himself told me this, that, you know, he used to come as an ordinary worker to Delhi for organizational work. And he used to stay in the South Avenue, North Avenue area. And uh, during their morning walks, they would, you know, come across. And Baba would always talk nicely to him and he would always touch uh, uh, Baba's feet. And uh, so this is very interesting entry in Baba's uh, diary that uh, when uh, Mr. Modi as the Gujarat chief minister came to meet the president for the first time. 
and Baba wrote that uh, you know he is a bitter critic of the Congress and the government policies and during NDC meetings I mean always you know we had many a times we had uh, spat but always in private you know he always touches my feet and tells me that it gives him pleasure to do so I do not understand the reason why so so this is something you know which is very interesting so I narrated this and Mr. Modi also confirmed this uh, saying that this has been a long practice and also the relationship between the Prime Minister and the President, um, one of the main reason I think not just personal equation or personal regards, but my father's belief that a President has constitutional role to play and that is and also constitutional limitation uh, not to interfere in governance. So in the very first meeting, he very candidly told uh, the Prime Minister that we belong to two different ideological parties to different ideology, ideologies, but the people have given you mandate. So I am not going to in any way interfere with the governance, that is your job, that is the job of the cabinet. But in, if in any constitutional matter, if you need any help, uh, you can always you know, seek my advice and um, I am going to help you fully, support. I will, uh, and and I, I was told about this by Mr. Modi himself and while telling it to me, he also said that Dada ke liye ye baat kehna bahut badi baat thi. So I think from the beginning, the Prime Minister and the President, you know, the, there was an openness and honesty between the, in the inter interaction. One point which I think uh, really defines and I think uh, uh, Dr. Pranam Mukherjee in his own way tried to, uh, you know, keep away from that controversial part is the 1984, which is, was really his turning face when he was on the same flight after Mrs. Indira Gandhi's assassination. Mm -hmm. uh, you tried to touch upon it and try to bring about it. What exactly are you trying to convey here? What exactly happened? That it was people around Rajiv Gandhi who Yes, played? it was people around Raj Rajiv Gandhi and there is one particular person. Uh, you are not naming here? No, I have named him here. Hmm. I have named him here in the book, but I am not going to tell you because people should, there should be something unsaid so that people buy the book and read it. <laughs> so there is one particular person who was present there whom my father rightly or wrongly felt that who actually planted the story and it was then picked up by people around uh, Rajiv at that time and uh, but it was not fa it was claimed that Baba claimed his uh, staked his uh, claim to become the Prime Minister as on the virtue of being but it was on the contrary whereas you know my father felt according to him that Rajiv should take over immediately because a lot of uncertainty has been created uh, a prime minister was assassinated so you know there can't be any scope of squabble within the party and if Rajiv takes over immediately um, uh, there wouldn't be you know so but a canard was spread uh, uh, by people around him that you know he did this so that was one controversy which I talked in length about the book because that is something again haunted him and even in 2004 also when that he was not made the prime minister you know this came up that because he wanted to you know become prime minister then you know so so that those is misgivings those, those misgivings that is not the right thing but why you know he felt that uh, during the two months of interaction you know because rajiv gandhi became uh, the uh, prime minister uh, after 31st uh, october uh, when he took oath and then again you know after two months there was the election and then he became in this two months of working together with baba in the cabinet so he spoke very strongly about uh, his views, about his opinions, um, and which was perhaps not liked. So, and he wrote in his uh, notes, you know, which he left behind, that when I look back, I think Rajiv was perhaps uh, uh, right in not taking me because he realized I'm a tough nut, and it will not be easy to for, for him to work with me. So I think that is, you know, the reason. Not that, uh, that, that uh, because of the you know kind of apprehension. I will not say mistrust, but apprehension on part of both Ra Rajiv and uh, especially Sonia uh, of not giving uh, my father the 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 the, the final premium, premium post of the prime minister, because perhaps they felt that you know he will uh, he he might challenge their authorities.